Hello everybody, Raven Knight here, and it is time to talk about the lore of Goodmunder the Great. I just did a video where I read over all the lore that Ubisoft gave us. If you want to listen to that video first before watching this, go check out the video, would really appreciate it. Or if you just want to read it from Ubisoft themselves, go to the Ubisoft website where they talk about hero skins. They've got all the lore written there, that's where I read it from. Go check it out before you watch this, it's really good lore. And I mean that, it's really good lore, and we're going to talk about here what I think about it. So for those of you who don't want to go listen to it, I'll give you the briefest of rundowns. Goodmunder is the big Viking Jarl who you defeat in the Night Campaign uh, portion of For Honor. He's this guy who's really famous because he fights you in like three waves, I think it is. You fight him once on this cat on this ram, then you fight him in his pack of wolves, and then you fight him one more time outside of his burning home. Lots of stuff went on there. Really cool fight scene. Very fun. Um, but now, this story that we're hearing is taking place after his death. Apparently, the Vikings all threw a big funeral for Goodmunder because he was their hero. They all come together, despite their differences, to honor this great hero. And according to Viking tradition, you break their weapon and shield uh, before you send them off. But for some reason, Goodmunder sword and shield could not be broken. And this made them realize that Goodmunder was more than just a mere Viking Jarl. He was something of a legend, something of myth to them, like he was beyond mere human to them. And so they start telling sagas and stories and legends about Goodmunder's life. And this story, this legend, this lore that we're hearing is one of those sagas. In fact, they go so far as to have it being told as if narrated by another Viking. Kind of like how I did my pirate legend where it is someone telling us the story rather than just some obscure narrator telling it. It is an actual Viking at the funeral around a bonfire telling us the legend of Goodmunder and how he came to be the Jarl of Wolves and how he came to get hold of his sword and shield, all that fun stuff. So it even it opens with the Viking guy telling us, y'all listen up, everyone gather around, listen carefully to the story I'm about to tell. And then he tells us the story. Now what is the story? The story is that when he was a young man, Goodmunder uh, fell into this ravine, this great valley of brimstone, fire. It was a hellscape, essentially. We don't know exactly where it is, but all we do know is it's a horrific land. He wanders around in fear because there's something dangerous coming for him and he doesn't know what it is and he's terrified. But he ends up coming across these three wolf pups. And the wolf pups are even more scared than he is because their mother's gone. They have no one to protect them. And so he finds purpose and bravery in protecting these three wolf pups. And so he wanders until he finds this sword and shield which bear the resemblance of Odin, the Allfather. And though they look burning and and full of fire, he picks them up and they don't burn him as if they were made for him. And then he takes these weapons and begins fighting uh, the enemy that's coming for him, which is basically a mob of undead Viking warriors, like these zombie Vikings or Draugr Vikings, and he begins fighting them alongside the pups. And after winning, he takes the pups and finds his way back to Valkenheim, and wherein he becomes the leader of the Wolf Clan and, fa and becomes one of the greatest heroes of Valkenheim. And then the Viking storyteller ends his story by basically saying that we can learn a lot from Goodmunder and what he did. We can learn a lot from that by realizing that in the pups, Goodmunder saw potential, just as we should see potential in ourselves. This is not the time for us to fall and crash and die. This is the time for us to rise up and become better than we are and overcome the difficulties before us. That's essentially the story. So what do I think? First of all, let me just say, I think it's really, really good. This was a very creative way to approach it and probably the best way to approach a Viking legend as a saga because the Vikings and Norse are known for their sagas. This was a very creative idea, very unique, very good for what I wanted to see for for Goodmunder, and I loved the approach. The way they had it as a Viking telling a story around a bonfire was incredibly creative. Absolutely loved it. I think that there's a lot of creativity that we can have here, because one of the cool things about a saga is you know it's not going to be true, and it's allowed to have fantastical elements. So I have no criticism with them saying, oh, there are zombies here. Oh, there's this magical sword and shield that was made by Odin themselves and it should burn you, but it doesn't. I have no problems with that because it's a saga and a lot of this is not going to be realistic. And I think it's a creative idea that in the real world, in real, in the real setting, Goodmunder sword and shield couldn't be broken so for some reason. We don't know the reason, but they've invented reasons as to why that they were given by Odin or their special God-made weapons or something like that. And I think that is incredibly cool, incredibly creative, and very fitting of what Vikings would do. So this was a very, very good direction. I also like how we tied in the wolves. I think it was neat that in the fight with Goodmunder, he had these wolves that obeyed him, and so they give a reason for that. He found these pups 
when they were children and now and since he protected them they now serve him and fight alongside him which is again very creative and we also get the idea that he founded the wolf clan in Valkenheim which came from the fact that he had these trained wolves so again all this stuff very very good idea i think all of it was written well and i'll also say this i love the fact that at the end they tried to take a lesson from it they try they kind of turn goodmunder's story into a parable or a fable this is done a lot throughout history you take a legendary hero or person like take take hercules for example you would take a legendary figure like hercules in greek mythology and you would turn him into this parable figure like you'd have him do something, but through what he did, it teaches you a lesson. And that's exactly what they did with Goodmunder. Whether the story of Goodmunder that he tells is true or not, or whether he made it up on the spot or not, is irrelevant. He used it to teach a lesson at a time when the Vikings needed to be taught a lesson. And that is very typical of saga-style stories like this, or bonfire-style stories like this. I thought that was a stroke of brilliance. Now, if I were to be critical at all, and it is hard for me to be critical on this because I think so much of it worked, there are two things that I think I would point out. The first is this. Of all the stories you could have told with Goodmunder, you decided to tell a story that I could definitely see the writing on the wall. I could see the intention behind what they were doing. Like, you could have had Goodmunder fight a monster or a sea serpent. You could have had him fought another, fight another Jarl. Like, I honestly thought what the story they were going to tell was Goodmunder rising up to overthrow a evil Jarl or something and becoming a good, honest, wise Jarl who ruled over the Wolf Clan and ruled over um, Svengard or something like that. That's what I thought would happen. Because I wanted Svengard to tie him to the lore stuff. But they didn't. They told the story of him falling into a hellscape where he fights zombies. And that's fine. There's nothing at all wrong with that. But I know why they did it, because the Halloween event is coming up, and they wanted to tie this into the Halloween event. They wanted Goodmunder's legend to tie into the Halloween stuff coming up. And I will repeat myself, because it needs to be repeated. I don't mind that. I think that's fine, but I will admit I saw the author's intention plain as day. I knew why they wrote the story the way they did. Is it bad? No, but it is something that I noticed, and we do need to take it, and we do need to take uh, note of that. The, a good author can weave things into the story so seamlessly that you don't notice what they're trying to do. But some authors, and I don't blame him for this. Anyone could have seen. Like, let's be honest, I don't blame him. I don't blame the author for doing this. He was doing what he had to do with what he had. This isn't me criticizing the author. This is me. Just, I'm just pointing out. I see what you were doing. I see the goal here. And that's not a bad thing. It's just, I saw that. Like, it's kind of like, I see, I see what you're doing. Like, it's that kind of thing. Um, it's still good. still good. I just see what the goal was. The second thing that I'll say is, um, and this is a little bit odd, I know, but follow me on this one. I think that one thing missing from the legend is Svengard. Hear me out. He, the whole, the whole point of the season is the shield of Svengard. I would have liked to have seen Svengard brought a little bit more into the limelight, like the importance of Svengard. We know that in the campaign mode, Svengard was a food storage location. But why the shield of Svengard? Why not the shield of Odin? Or the shield of Goodmunder? Or the shield of the wolf? Or something like that. Why did it have to be the shield of Svengard? It made me think that this legend was going to be more about Svengard. But Svengard was never even mentioned in the uh, legend of Goodmunder. So I was kind of like, I wanted to know how Sv what Svengard meant to Goodmunder. What if Svengard was his home before he got lost in that hellscape? What if it is the hellscape that he rebuilt as Svengard? What if, like, because what I thought was going to happen, what I honestly thought this legend was going to do, was Goodmunder was going to be this young guy who wanted to, who saw the evil going on in Svengard. Svengard was this awful place where a cruel Jarl was abusing his people, and he decides that he's going to rise up against it, so he becomes the shield of the people of Svengard, and defeats the bad Jarl, and rules over Svengard, and turns it into something more productive, like a food storage location. I would have been totally okay with that as well. Again, I, I want to make this clear because I think people are assuming I'm criticizing. I'm not criticizing what we got. I'm saying this surprised me because it's what I thought we were going to get. Because Svengard doesn't get a lot of attention in this legend. And I thought maybe it should given the name of the season. So, th but that's just me. Like, for example, like the last two seasons we've had. Um, the Muramasa Blade. We know why the Muramasa Blade matters because Muramasa was the guy who invented the katana, who built the katana that made it evil or filled with evil power. And now we know why Master Katashi has to use his zen and patience and control to maintain self-control while using the sword. And with the Sword of Ashfeld, we know the importance of that sword because it unifies all the legions of Ashfeld. 
But with the shield of Svengard, what does Svengard have to do with the allocation of the shield? The only thing Svengard has to do with the shield is the fact that the user, Goodmunder, died defending Svengard. And I don't know, I, that works, that still works, but I think we could have gone a little bit further into Svengard there. Not sure how, I would have to think about it for a little while to figure that out, but overall, again, the lore is good. This is really good lore behind the hero skin. I think it fits. I think it's a clever way to tie in a saga into Goodmunder's life because I, I kind of thought to myself, how are you going to tell Goodmunder's story when we already know so much about him from the story mode? How are you going to do that? I actually thought, oh, tell a saga about him. Actually, is pretty brilliant. That's a brilliant way to go about it. But overall, I thought it was really good. The hero skin looks tight. The lore is tight. I think all of this is really good. I don't see anything wrong with this at all. Like I said, very neat. And as I said before, since I see the writing on the wall and I see what their intention was with doing this zombie horror kind of tie-in, I think we get to get to see a sneak peek of what the Halloween event is going to be. And if so, like if we're having like a zombie fighting mode, oh my god, that's going to be incredible. So I'm very, very excited about that. Uh, but anyway, guys, what do you guys think? What do you think of the lore? Do you like Goodmunder's lore? Are you, ha are you happy to have him back in the game setting? Uh, let me know down in the comments down below. And as always, I will see you in my next video. Take care.